Well, I, everybody run off on me. They just, uh, they didn't me, so you, you better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll do what the Lord says. Good to be here this morning. Amen. Always good to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Uh, and this church is just like home. It's, it always has been and always will be. Uh, I remember never not coming to this church, really. And it's just been a, it's been a blessing. And I, I know Doug and Mary Jane, I, they like my second mom and dad, and they've seen me grow, and they've seen my faults. They've <laughs> he really has. I've went through several stages, but <laughs> ain't a <I> Mary Jane. <laughs> She'll tell y'all about it. Her and Doug. But uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I've been through several stages. Everybody's had a wild streak, sometime or another. But sometimes I've said that you can't stand behind the pulpit unless you've got a past. That's right. Lord, don't Amen. call perfect people. But you know what? He never made but one perfect person. That's right. And that's the only one that's been here that the reason we're still here today. Um, if you would, let's go ahead and turn in First Thessalonians chapter 5. I don't even know what Teresa's glasses are strong enough. I, I, here you go, Tracy. You'll need to see. Anyway. No. It's all right. I'll I'll make it through it. It's all it's all right. We'll make it through. Doctor told me I had calluses or what was it? She said cataracts, whatever it was, calluses on my eyes. I was ble- I, I, she said, do you weld? I said, yeah, I do. That's pretty good right there. I said, yeah, I weld. She said, you wear sunglasses. I said, not much. I do sometimes. She said, well, you need to start wearing them. Okay, I'll, I'll work on that. But uh, thank God for being here. I, what a blessing it is. Uh, Brother Doug, you were saying a while ago, no, I would never hurt nobody's feelings or say anything whatsoever. Um, but I will preach what God tells me to say. If I've hurt your feelings by my own ignorance that I've said something, I, I apologize and get down on my hands and knees and tell you how much I'm sorry and how much I love you. But if it's both spirit and something said bothers you you need to talk to God it's his fault That's right. That's right. Um, but I thank God I try to be obedient there ain't enough for there ain't enough repentance and hell preached in the pulpits today there's too much teachers having itching ears here in these last days that the Bible said that there was going to be he told us all these things in Matthew 24 and he explained all that when they could. They they still that back then they didn't understand even after he explained to them. But today's time, he was talking to you now. He was talking to the church now, and y'all understand it. Y'all understand and know this is the last days. But people have gotten away, and they don't care anymore. They they care no not whatsoever. It don't matter. They have no respect. No respect for people. Uh, of, of God anymore they have no respect to the uh, church on Sunday I, I was looking today as we was going through Elkin that they're having the car show cruise in on Sunday you know used to they had it on Friday and That's Saturday right. That's right. you know sports and things have been put on Wednesdays now and stuff like that with a scope used to they, uh, they cherished and, and thought about and respected God. That's right. And they didn't have anything on Wednesday. Those events and things happen on Thursday, Friday, Monday, or Tuesday. But what's happened? 
They took God out of school and we've allowed it to happen. They took God away and they wonder, they say, why is these things, why is that, where is God at when all this tragedy happened? Well, you took him away. Right. You got the Bible out of school. You took everything out of, and then they wonder why their officers walk in the halls of the schools today. It's because God's not there. He's not in it. There's not enough discipline. Yes. Amen. But the Bible tells us, he don't say spoil the rod, uh, spare the rod, spoil the child. He says if you don't use the rod, you hate the child. That's what he said. Right. Man, it's quiet this morning. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> we got a... You got, we got, the Bible tells that, that the man behind the pulpit is supposed to be in, in season and out of season. When you say, when, all these uh, big churches and things like that, I've been to them, you've heard them, you've seen them. Hell's not even preached. Hell's not even brought up. Friend, the reason that, that me and Brother Doug and people is preaching to you about hell and telling you about these things of the, uh, uh, the Bible to tell you of this wicked place. Come on. Come on. Because he said here in the last days that people will come callous to their own, that, that, that they'll be callous to, right. to the things, the convictions. Yes. So many times the devil will put things in our mind and make us feel that it's okay, but it's not okay. It's not all right. It's not all right to live and sin and shack up and smoke weed and drink Come and on. things like that. The Bible tells you that. Come on. But it's got to be okay. It's because the world is getting worldly and the, the church is getting so worldly. And the world is getting churchy. And there's not being messages preached anymore. The old Holy Ghost conviction. Go ahead. The old things that's not being preached in the pulpits now. But friend, if we wasn't standing here telling you this, we wouldn't love you. We wouldn't tell you about these things called hell. But friend, I want to tell you today about a place called heaven. I want to tell you about a place called heaven. Come on went to prepare for us that he went to he made it just for you and just for me but you know brother Brandon if you was the only person here on earth Jesus would have come and died for you brother he would have come and died for you but he died for each and every one because he loved you he thought so much of you in verse 1 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 it says but of the times and the season brethren Ye have no need that I write unto you for yourselves. Know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Stop right there for a second. If He says uh, that if, he, if you know that a thief was coming to your house, you'd be prepared. You'd be prepared. You'd be ready if that thief was to come. But you don't know when a thief is going to come. You don't know what's going to, you don't know. That's why he says, I will come quickly. Whew. Friend, it's almost here. I'm surprised. I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, he, he don't come before we walk out the doors today. Man. He has told us we've looked around and we've seen these times. And I can't help but think in my mind. That the people that has recently died and people that, that have gone on and I think in my mind, in my heart, Brother Doug, are, have they been right with God? Have they been true with God? Have they been? Because you're thinking, this is what I can't comprehend, is eternity. 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 You are getting ready to face eternity. When you take that last breath, this, this world is nothing. This world has nothing to offer. Absolutely nothing. Come on. We're just here passing through. I, I've heard this comment made. I think my dad's the one who originally said it. But the only part of your life is that little dash on your headstone. That's right. That little dash is your whole life. Amen. Because after that is either living or dying. You're either going to burn in hell forever and ever and ever and ever. Or you're going to live in the glory 
with Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. But he says that I'll come as a thief in the night in verse 3, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh on him, them. Hadn't we saw that recently? Huh? What about when, uh, I, and I don't watch politics and, and stuff like that, but when I see YouTube, I see things come up like this. It pops up uh, but just recently, like where Tucker Carlson went to uh, over and saw Putin and talked, to, talked with him. And he was talking about peace, peace. Oh, it'd be okay if the, oh, it's peace. That, look out. He's warning us of these things. Tell us about it. But he says, Travail upon a woman with child, and there shall be no escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness. Well, glory, that the day should overtake you as a thief. And all the children of light and the children of day, we are not of night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. As others, as do others. But let us watch and be sober. He's talking to you, church. And he says, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love yes. and for an helmet. The hope of salvation. Whoa. Well, glory to God. Whew. We've got to put on that breastplate and that helmet of faith. We've got to put on that every day. It seems like I don't know how in this world that any of you have went through anything bad this week because I don't know how the devil has had time to mess with anybody else. He's been too busy at my house. Come on. <laughs> my goodness. Brother Doug, I feel like that I could that he has just poured out his wrath upon Come me on. this week. Come on. Come on. It seemed like the devil has just attacked me in every way he could. I've been depressed. I've been just yeah, I just Feel like I'm at rock bottom. Come on, come on. And I said, God, I need your help. Yes. I need your help. Yes. I can't make it through this world. No. I cannot go on without Him holding to my hand. No. I cannot. No. Go ahead, tell it now. Preach it on. Preach it to us now. It's good. I tell you one thing. Absolutely, I have realized. I have come to the realization this. I can't do anything unless I'm holding to his hand. I can't do anything unless I put on that whole armor that I was just reading about. I can't do anything. I am just, a, I am just as weak as I can be. And this week I have had to depend on him 100%. I have had to say, God, I need your help. I can't make it. I, man, I told Teresa, I said, honey, I just don't know what's going on with me, but I just feel miserable. I just wanted to go somewhere and crawl off in a hole, Brother Doug. I didn't want to talk to nobody, and everybody at work would get under my skin. And boy, the devil just keeps trying to attack even more. Come on. Not that you've ever been there. No, no. <laughs> oh, no. No. If you had any kind of management, oh, mm, it seems like the devil has really poured out his wrath. <laughs> because when, that, when you are tr going through the worst, Somebody will come up and make it a little bit more worse. <laughs> but you know something? People is watching our lives as Christian people. Not only as a preacher, but as a Christian. He is watching us. as at, People are watching us to wait and see what we do wrong and what we mess up. Man, I have, as, as I've heard many a time, the, the, as much old crow as, as I've eaten over the years, 
buzzard ought to be extinct. But <laughs> I have had to eat it a lot. I say something all the time that I shouldn't say. And soon as I, just like you said this morning, as soon as I do, the old Holy Ghost conviction gets a hold. Yeah. And then I have to go back to the woodshed. Yeah. And then I have to go back and apologize for something I've done. But it's like toothpaste. Put you out some toothpaste and try to put it back in the tube. <laughs> Ain't gonna happen. What about caulking? Can't put caulking back in the tube. Once it's out, it's out. Whenever you mess up and you do wrong, boy, the devil wants to broadcast it in front of everybody. And people this day, don't, they don't forgive. They only look for bad things. They only look for, and that's why it's, got, it's so hard for us to live a Christian life. This day and time, but friend, I'm here to tell you that he is coming when he comes like a thief in the night. If we live our life right, the way that we're supposed to, we ain't got to worry about them things anymore. Right. He's going to say, come child, like we lost the... This past week, a member of our church went on to be with the Lord. And I was thinking, all them pains and sickness and sorrows that she went through on this earth. <laughs> Could you imagine that trans... That, oh my goodness. Could you even imagine that to be in a frail body, to be as sick all the time, to have the pains and the sufferings of this world... To go to a 100% healthy body? Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. To go to... But, whoo, Lord, more than anything, could you imagine receiving that healthy body and seeing the face of Jesus Christ standing in front? Whoo, glory, hallelujah. And they as people giving all that up Come on. for hell? Come on. Come on. What has this world got to offer? Absolutely nothing. Brother Doug, I get excited talking about heaven. I get excited talking about getting to go up there. They ain't nothing this world has. To, I've got too many loved ones that's gone on that I want to go see. I've got too many loved ones that want to go on that I want to go be with. There's a lot of people that's, that that's, you go to the hospitals and nursing homes right Rest homes that they're sick and afflicted and they're going through pain and suffering. They don't want to live like that. They're ready to go home and be with Jesus. And I'm ready to go on with them. Amen, brother. Whew, hallelujah, hallelujah. But I think that uh, as that verse says in Psalms, I, I can't remember, what, we all know it, as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We don't fear no evil. No evil to be feared. Because he's with us. He's walking hand in hand with us. That his rod and his staff will comfort us. Whew, my goodness. He's going to be right there with us, Brother Doug. He's going to be when we walk. My goodness. Woo! That evil that's trying to come against us, we don't have to worry about it. If we hold as fast as Christians and we do as he just said right here in this word, we assemble ourselves together where he's supposed to be together as one. We can't, we can't, we can't go under. We can't go under because we're, we're working together. That's why he prepared the church. That's why he put us together so we can pray for one another. Even though we can't be here sometimes over sickness and pain, we got your phone number. Call you brother or sister. Turn to Romans chapter 5. And let's see. Romans 5. Well, let's start verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, 
We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. And rejoice in hope of glory of God. And not only so, but that we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Man, if he didn't just tell me something right there, Brother Doug. Maybe I'm not preaching to nobody here today. But he sure is talking to me. Because this past week, the things that I've went through and I've, I've, I've questioned. I have questioned God. I'm being honest with you. I'm still human flesh. I got questions. Yes. God, why am I going through this? Come on. He just told me right there. Yes. Sometimes tribulations we have to go through. But that gives us, whoo, man, that gives us patience and patience experience. And experience hope. <laughs> and hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed aboard in our hearts by Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Thank God for that Holy Ghost Spirit. Thank God for that Holy Touch yes. that He gives us, no matter what we're going through. I realized that this past week. That maybe I said, God, I couldn't find, I couldn't get the message together, which uh, we ain't supposed to get our message together anyway. He's supposed to do that. But, but sometimes we need a little, little help doing that. And I couldn't find, I couldn't get nothing together, and it was just, it was frustrating. And then God told me, He said, Kelly, I'll give you the words to say. Go ahead. I'll give you the words to say. And I've wondered many a time, and I can't help but question why. I've been to churches that they've already told you the message is going to be preached the next Sunday. They take, tell you ahead of time what the message is going to be. I don't like to go to school, or it feels like going to school. I didn't care for going when I went to do the. I like to go hang out and socialize. I didn't care about the book work. I like to go hang out with my buddies there. But I feel like I'm going back to school if I'm going to a place already knowing what I've got to be going to be taught about. I like to go somewhere where God has got control of the service. I like to go somewhere where things ain't consistent. I've been to this church many a time and the Holy Ghost take over. That's right. Whew, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Ghost just take over and ain't no preaching. He's the only one doing the preaching. He's the only one taking over. That's the way it ought to be. We ought to put it in God's hands and let Him take over as we're walking through that valley. Woo, glory. It's more we're going through that valley and it seems like things, it's just, got, it ain't going to get no better. That's in a good position to get down and talk to him. You're in a good position to get down and say, God, help me to do my first works over. But so many times that's when the devil tries to come and he tries to stick his little foot in the door. That's like COVID. That five-letter C word. I'm like you, Brother Doug. I hate that word. I hate that word. You know why I hate that word? It's like a cuss word. Because it is. It's got a lot of Christians out of, out of church. It's got a lot of people that used to be, he said you run good once, but what happened? He got out. They use that for an excuse. Boy, that has been one of the biggest excuses that I've ever seen. And you know what the scary part is? These people in the graveyard right now that use that for an excuse. 
Man, I know that's tough. That's tough to hear. That's tough. But friend, I'd a whole lot rather go to church with sickness and go to hell with it. Huh? I'd a whole lot rather go to church sick. I'd a whole lot rather wear that silly, stupid mask to church than go to hell and breathe inside the side with somebody gnawing on your flesh all the time. Woo! No, sir, this ain't popular preaching. No, sir, you're not going to hear this in some big fancy Baptist church. It ain't going to happen. You know, it's because I love you so this morning and I'm telling you about this place called hell because I don't want nobody to go. Warn your brother and sister. He tells us that. What did the rich man say? As he lifted up his eyes. Let's think about that. One drop, yes. I just want a drop of water, but go tell my brethren. Go tell them. Go warn them. It wouldn't have mattered if they warned them. They have been warning them. I've been, they've preaching, been warning people all this time. But yet they ignore it. They got other things to talk about. They'd rather talk about their brother or their sister or I don't like that message or I don't like what he's saying or I don't like what she's saying. or what. It ain't about that. It's about what God is saying that's getting a hold of your heart and what that Bible says right there because he said that'll be your road map. Woo, glory, hallelujah. Friend, I'm telling you today that it is close. It is so close. Brother David back there, if you saw him out in the pond and he was about to drown, wouldn't y'all do everything you could to save him? Wouldn't you do? What about Brother Robert right here? What if he was out in a, in a lake somewhere, he was fishing, fell off, and he was drowning? Wouldn't you do everything you could to save his life? Well, you got brothers and sisters out there that's going to hell. Why can't we do everything we can to save their life? We got to tell them about these things. Yeah. He said to warn my people. Woo! Friend, we've got to let people know. Instead of gossiping about all the bad things on the Facebook, put something about Jesus on there. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, this is God's house. This house, when it was built, it was anointed by God. It was anointed and touched by God. And when it was anointed and touched by God, oh, hallelujah, it was touched by the Holy Ghost, too. It was touched by the Holy Spirit. And he poured that anointing out upon this church. We've got to respect it like that. Brother Doug, <laughs> I feel the Holy Spirit moving here this morning. I feel the Holy Ghost moving oh. here in this house because He is here. He is here. Amen. Brother David, I thank God for this Spirit that we feel. I feel, thank God for the Spirit. You can't find that just anywhere. Amen. You can't go just anywhere and feel the Holy Spirit moving free. I've been in places that they just you just felt a void. You felt something you didn't feel comfortable. Whew. You ever been around somebody at a, that's dying? And, and my clothes that I'm getting ready to turn. You ever been around in a room with somebody dying and, and it, it you just didn't feel a good peace there? Or you felt something that just didn't feel right? You didn't feel that comfort? God gives you these wisdom and knowledge. He said that's called discernment of the Spirit. But have you ever been in a room where it's just so wonderful? Just feel a peace? He said, I'll send that peace in that storm. And he said that death is the last enemy that we're going to face. Friend, when we take that last breath, you think about what I said earlier, or God said earlier through me. 
that it's eternity. Eternity, that is a scary thing to think about is when you get ready to take that last breath. That scares me. That scares me because I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect by no means. I can't stand behind this pulpit and tell you right now that I've lived a perfect life because I'm not. I've slipped up. I've come short. I've done wrong. I've said things that I shouldn't have said. But like you said earlier, God still loves me. And it's gone. It's gone. When he shed that precious blood for you and me on that cross of Calvary, he forgave those sins. All I had to do was come back. To, hallelujah. Went back down to that cross. Said, Lord, I'm sorry. You don't have to be right here in this altar to get saved. You could be going down the road in the car and that Holy Ghost conviction get a hold of you. God has got, God is putting this in my mind. Don't be, if you're, if you've got a, if you've got a, a relative or cousin or friend, I never, I never uh, tell anybody to argue Bible. Don't argue Bible. Show them Bible. Know that Bible. He said to show your, afraid to show yourself approved rightly dividing the word of truth you're supposed to know that Bible you're supposed to take that Bible study that Bible so when somebody comes say don't argue I can't argue with you but here's the word you got to know that word I'm saying all that to say this that this this world is full of people that think that they're saved and going to heaven. That don't know any better. They have no idea. Because they've said in a pew and they've said, repeat after me. And you'll be saved. Honey, that's not the way that works. Like I said, when you go, you could be going down the road and get saved. When that Holy Spirit gets a hold of you and you let go brother Brandon I've seen and you have too I'm probably sure several people have get a hold of the bench they don't want to let go but when they do automatically you're saved <laughs> automatically you're saved all you got to do is make it one step But you've got to do it. You've got to be committed to it. You've got to do it. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. The truth is, is you're only saved if the Holy Spirit is pulling to you. You can't repeat words after somebody else. That's somebody else's wishy-wash stuff. But when you get down on your hands and knees and you turn it over to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's all we've got to do today is turn it over to him. And he said that I will send that peace in the storm. I will send that peace. I will be that. Mm. That still small voice. It don't matter of the that, that, that all the things can be loud going on around you. <laughs> All the things of this world could be hitting around you. But if God ain't in it, it ain't nothing. But that still small voice will speak to you sometimes and say it's okay. Woo, glory, hallelujah. That's all it takes. That's all it needs to take care of all your problems and troubles that we turn it over to God.